There is a grand convergence, it seems to me, between President Trump's attacks on the witch hunt and his attacks on fake news, by which I mean uh, increasingly in the tweets that he is putting up, he is going after the Robert Mueller investigation, witch hunt, desperate, uh, corrupt, uh, angry Democrats and all that. And of course, he's whacking at his favorite target, the corrupt news media, the dishonest media, and often the way in which they report on the Russia investigation. I'm sure in the president's mind, uh, these two reinforce each other. Mueller does stuff or stuff gets leaked around uh, the Russia probe and the press goes wild and uh, this in turn uh, puts the Russia investigation even more so at the top of the news while he's trying to deal with North Korea and Kim Kardashian and other very important subjects. So I thought as a public service I would try to critique a few of these uh, because sometimes the president scores pretty good points when he punches back against the coverage. Sometimes he goes a little too far. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, these are all from yesterday. Uh, not that it matters, says the president, but I never fired James Comey because of Russia, exclamation point. The corrupt mainstream media loves to keep pushing that narrative, but they know it is not true. Well, the problem here is that there's a piece of videotape. president talking to NBC's Lester Holt a couple of days after the uh, Comey firing, in which he said, one, he fired Comey regardless of recommendation. Uh, that means regardless of uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein writing a memo saying you should fire Comey because of the, his botching of the Hillary investigation. And also in that same interview, he talked about the Russia probe uh, and made pretty clear that it was at least a factor in the Comey dismissal. Uh, so maybe the press uses some shorthand here. Shorthand here, he's reacting to a New York Times story about a McCabe memo, uh, you know, on uh, the Comey firing. This gets into the weeds. Uh, but it's not quite the case that the president hasn't tied the two, the two together in front of television cameras. Tweet number two, the corrupt mainstream media, that seems to be our new nickname, is working overtime, not to mention the infiltration of people, spies, parentheses, informants, into my campaign, surveillance much. All right, so the problem here is that the existence of the FBI informant who talked to three different Trump campaign advisors in 2016 was broken by the, quote, failing New York Times. So it is the mainstream media that put that out. And there's been hundreds of stories and segments about this informant. Now, there is a sort of a semantic debate in the press. You've seen this in the Times itself, CNN and elsewhere, where the press is not buying the president's spygate terminology. In other words, referring to this guy, who most organizations aren't mentioning, an American professor in London, as an informant who perhaps was just doing his job uh, in looking into attempted Russian meddling in the election, whereas the president views him as a spy, you probably would too, if uh, he was somebody who was talking to your people in a campaign without knowing that he's working for the bureau, uh, and he prefers the spy terminology. You know, it's a lot more sinister, 007 and all of that. Um, but it's certainly not true that, that the issue is not being covered. It has been covered a lot. Number three, talking to Disney CEO uh, Bob Iger in the wake of the firing of Roseanne and the cancellation of her show. Iger, where is my call of apology? You and ABC have offended millions of people and they demand a response. How is Brian Ross doing? He tanked the market with an ABC lie, yet no apology, double standard. So the president, as you, I'm sure you know, um, didn't comment directly on Roseanne's, frankly, racist tweet about Valerie Jarrett, but he did go after Iger saying this is double standard. Why well, hasn't Iger apologized to him for all the terrible things said on ABC and on ESPN, which is part of Disney. In the case of Brian Ross, though, to refresh your recollection, uh, back in December, Ross reported something that turned out to be flatly untrue. It was a really bad mistake, uh, saying that Mike Flynn, the former National Security Advisor, had been told by Trump to contact Russian officials during the campaign, which would have furthered the allegation of Russian collusion, when in fact it was after the election, when it's pretty routine for an incoming administration to make those kinds of contacts. But ABC did apologize for that botched story. ABC did do a full, full retraction. And ABC did suspend Brian Ross for a month with no pay and brought him back in kind of a lesser job. So that part, uh, the idea there's no apology and no remorse on ABC's part, uh, turns out not to be quite right. Or here's the last one. The failing and corrupt New York Times estimated the crowd last night at 1,000 people, when in fact it was many times that number. The arena was rocking. This is the way they demean and disparage. They're dis honest people who don't get me and never did. The president scores on this one. This was the rally in Nashville. The Times reported about 1,000 people showed up. The fire marshals later said it was more than 5,000 people. But the Times ran a correction, and the reporter, Julie Hirschfeld Davis, went on Twitter and said, 
my estimate was way off. We got it wrong, and when we got it, get it wrong, we admit it. So I give the Times credit for that. It is sometimes hard to estimate crowds. But on the facts, the president is right on this one. Now, whether he's 100% right, 85% right, whether he exaggerates, whether there is an apology or isn't an apology, all of this, of course, is red meat for his followers and a way of communicating with the 52 million Americans who follow him on Twitter. So he's going to continue to attack the press. Our job, I think, is to say when he's exactly on target and when he's a bit off.